Thank you. Please be seated. Friends, our national level webinar is on career opportunities in a defense sector. After our degree, we get confused to select appropriate profession. And then question comes whether to continue PG degree or to select a job. Therefore, this webinar will focus on your choice of career and career plan of life in defense sector. There are lots of career options are there after your TY degree, uh, specifically from BCom degree, CA, ICWA, MBA, MMS, then LLB, MCOM, MPCC exam, and also you can, you can become an entrepreneur. So I will request our principal, Dr. Kailash Anekar ma'am, to have a more light on this national level webinar. Ma'am. A very good evening. Namaskar. Jai Hind to one and all. On behalf of my college management, staff and students, I welcome all respected dignitaries, participants and aspiring students to this national level webinar on career opportunities in defense organized by Career and Placement Guidance Sale of our college. My sincere gratitude to Advocate Vibhi Deshpande, sir, Chairman of our college, and all management dignitaries for their continuous support in organizing such national level webinar. Dr. Matkar, in charge of Career and Placement Guidance Sale, deserves appreciation for his efforts in organizing such very useful national webinar today. I must make here mention of <clears throat> a noble person, Mr. Srikant Joshi, a person of integrity and with positive involvement in many social welfare activities. It is through Mr. Srikant we could reach today's very dynamic and resourceful speaker, Colonel Sri Shailesji Raikar. Friends, it's a common perception among people that defense sector requires only soldiers. But in fact, there are ample job opportunities for both male and female for jobs of engineers, doctors, nurses, and other healthcare staff, drivers, office and administrative staff, etc. Very few to mention. Defense sector is one which requires discipline hard work and team spirit. I personally think, it's my personal opinion, that like uh, few of the countries in the world, in India also, every person on attaining the age of 18 years must join defense sector as apprentice or trainee at least for two years. It will help our youngsters to be disciplined, focused, and goal-oriented. Also, to come out of addiction of social media, web series, Netflix, etc., and other harmful addictions. Those two crucial years of life will make them realize that how human body has got huge potentials for survival and adjustments in all adversities 
and hardships. I heartfully welcome Colonel Shailesh Ji Raikar Sir with salute Jai Hind Sir. I express my sincere gratitude to him for accepting our invitation to deliver a very useful guidance on career opportunities in defense sector. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for your advice and important of this particularly uh, uh, defense sector. Uh, <clears throat> one should have like, an entire knowledge about the career and career management. Friends, keeping in this view for foresight, Principal Madam has kept his you can say, webinar to know the opportunities in our defense sector and how students after become or the degree choose we can say particular kind of sectors as per their importance and we can say career. So today we have such an expert and defense sector guru, Colonel Mr. Shailesh Raikar sir. I will read his brief profile. <coughs> sir has we can say, completed his uh, high school level educations in a Paranjape Vidyalaya. Then sir has completed his uh, degree in statistic, uh, statistic, BSc statistics. Uh, from Parley College and another vacancy degree are def he has graduated of Defense Service Staff College, Washington. Then talking about the working experience, sir has given serious UPC exam and he attempted and clear in first attempt only. In January 1986, he joined Indian Military Academy, Dehradun. In June 1987, he commissioned in a Mahar Regiment and nine years of service he joined military intelligence. In 1991-92, company commander in a Siachen glacier and then commanded military intelligence unit in a Manipur, Nagaland. In a 2001, he was handpicked officer to defense intelligence agency, USA. Then 2007, he is a member of defense delegation to Myanmar. In 2008, premature retirement and then joined Bosla Military School as a commandment. At the present, he is working as a vice president in administration in a Piramal group. He is a weed reader and cyclist. He is a professional trainer for ATS Mumbai and Maharashtra Intelligence Academy. He was also visiting faculty, particularly from Nasik, that is KTHM College Nasik. Such a wonderful professional, administered, and disciplined that the experience we have today. And I request, sir, welcome you on this platform. And I request you to charge you can see your session, sir. Riker, sir, yeah. over to you. Thank you, Dr. Matkar. Uh, thank you for the kind words. And uh, sorry for this inconvenience you're facing, but it is the exact time I just reached my building so now light conditions must be good and you can see my face i'm just walking towards my home first and foremost i must thank uh, college management and uh, dr kaila shanekar uh, who approached me and gave me this opportunity of course shrikan zushi whom she mentioned in the uh, uh, opening remarks uh, he was my classmate from my school days and uh, I always like to talk about. I always like to talk about what I did, or uh, many other things uh, which I didn't do. About army, give me a moment. I'm just there will be a, some disturbance. Okay. Uh, so after this pleasantries, let's come down to uh, the topic of the lecture. That is. Career opportunities in defense sector. I would not like to use this word defense sector because defense sector is so huge and so vast. Uh, I only know about armed forces of the union. Now, why I'm making this distinction? Because when I say defense sector, the person who is making bullets for the rifle, the manufacturing facilities, it's uh, like those of you who are from Maharashtra, uh, you know, there is a place called uh, Kirki or Khadki near Pune. So we have got an ammunition factory there. 
and uh, out there the bullets of small arms like revolver pistols and rifles they are manufactured there so that is also part of defense sector but no army officer is posted there same way uh, we all know dr apj abdul kalam our ex president he was a scientist working on uh, missile systems and he is known as missile man but he never wore uniform but he was part of defense sector same way there are so many manufacturing units and so many sub units they all form defense sector but what i am going to talk today is not about those opportunities those scope i am only going to talk about armed forces of the union when i am using this term repeatedly union is union of india that is our country and armed forces of the union is armed forces of india now you'll ask me what is armed forces so the people who wield arms and in case of emergency they use arms that is armed forces now who all are armed forces of india so it is <clears throat> army navy air and coast guard these four services are called armed forces of the union and i'll be talking about them what they do uh, how you join them or uh, what are the career opportunities particularly for commerce people and uh, which all various levels as dr anekar rightly brought out there are two entry levels in any service one is a soldier we call soldier in army we call airman in air force and we call them sailors in navy same in coast guard and another entry level that is you directly get commissioned as an officer in the armed forces so i'll just briefly touch on each and every entry level i am not going to show you any slide because dr anekar also inquired whether i'll be showing any slides uh i will avoid using that primarily for one reason this is uh, what we are interacting today i am not seeing any one of your faces so as it is communication is barred by the technology and the dis- physical distance had it been one to one uh, interaction i would have been very slide and when you are reading slide you are not paying attention to me and when you are paying attention to me you are not reading the slide Uh, that is just being human and so i thought i will not show you any slide at the outset those who get bored halfway through this lecture i'm just telling you you just type a search uh, in google or any search engine uh, join indian army or join indian navy or join indian air force and there is a direct website by that name uh, the person who is handling this screen if he can just type join indian army and click on that Uh, sorry uh, i am not seeing the screen sir or whom sir is handling that anyway so going for further if it is not uh, working out no shall i uh, show the uh, screen yes please. yes please yes please okay please go yes, to google, please go to google sir on the same screen okay the same screen uh, please go to the google and click on join indian army Yeah. Can you see the web? Oh. Yeah, that's all. So can you see the website? 
it is that simple just to get any information on internet today so this i am giving you just as a, 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 a introduction to how you can find out information about all these things on internet but then the question remains if this information is so readily available why does college put in effort to organize such lectures because it is same as that there are so many books of commerce available in the market which you can buy or you can rent or you can borrow it from library but still you require teaching staff to explain couple of concepts couple of details and that is where actual teaching pl takes place just just a moment so this is just to give you the uh, 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 quick link to where you can find all these things and similarly if you time join indian navy you will get the same website similar website not same website similar website same with indian air force now coming down to how do people join all these things so first and foremost uh you have to fall in a particular age bracket now why there is so much of emphasis on age bracket is all these services fight war and for fighting we have to be young because young people can fight old people they are more mature they think twice before getting into fight of course that does not mean uh, our army chief is young or our naval chief is young or something like that they have served the country for 30 35 years and uh, of course uh, they are 58 60 and so on and so forth but there are people who actually fight the war they are young people coming down to the first entry level that is how do soldiers join so uh, for army the minimum qualification required for a soldier to join fighting profession is 10 standard and he has to be less than 19 years of age तो यू से सर ये तो बहुत बच्चा हो गया यस दे आर किड्स एंड आर्मी ट्रेन देम टू बी मेन सो एवरी सोल्जर हैज टू अंडर गो ट्रेनिंग वर्थ नाइन मंथ्स टू जॉइन अ फाइटिंग फोर्स ऑफकोर्स देर आर मल्टीपल अदर एंट्रीज लाइक पीपल हु जॉइन टेक्निकल आर्म्स सो दे हैव टू बी ट्वेल्थ साइंस पास और uh where are there very specific requirement is there like something like that you must not have thought about it uh there are so many military hospitals in country so military hospitals are like any other hospital that hospital conducts surgeries that hospital conducts treatment that hospital takes x rays of so many people so again question should come to your mind who is handling those x ray machines so obviously people who are trained on x ray machines so that means there is a scope for a 12 science guy to join army in army medical corps and get himself diploma in radiology who handles x ray machine similarly there are doctors of various use and craft and uh these kind of various entries they keep on happening but primarily you have to be more than 16 to join as a soldier and less than 19 Uh, otherwise you lose that chance of course you add any technical qualification to your uh, resume and you want to get into that particular profession then of course that age limit is upwardly revised all that information is available on this website before that uh, many of the times people ask me question uh, what is the routine of a soldier you know very pertinent question like a bank clerk or a bank officer he gets up in the morning he is in his family uh goes for a walk does yoga or something like that whatever he wants to do takes bath pray for a while take a train car or whatever bus goes to his bank does lot of paperwork at the end of the day he comes back home so what does a soldier do now it's a very vast uh i mean there is never ending answer because if the soldier is posted in new delhi he does some different job if a soldier is posted in jnk he does a different job uh madam just permit me i am just transmitting from uh, mobile to laptop uh can you see me on laptop hello hello 
ఎస్ సార్ హలో hello yeah can you see me now no i just you can stop then you can present it yeah i have uh, switched off the mobile and switched on the laptop yeah yeah you can yeah yeah we can see you sir okay uh, sorry sorry for the interruption yeah so uh, i'm talking about army first uh, there is a element who does actual fighting that is infantry artillery armored corps they are the people who are actually infantry means uh, those of you who have seen uh, movie uri so all those paratroopers they are infantry then uh, there are people you must have seen going in tanks uh, what we called in marathi rangade or hindi mein bakhtarband gaadiya so they are armored corps people and uh, then you must have seen huge guns uh, you must have heard all of you must have heard the name bofors so that is called artillery gun so artillery they participate in war actual war but then there are other people who directly or indirectly participate something like a branch called engineers they are the people who create roads where are those no roads they uh, help us store water and supply water where is there is no water they are the people who plan uh, who help us plan explosions like if we want to blow up the bridge in enemy territory they are the people who help us uh, plan all these things they do the calculation of explosives and so on and so forth then a very important arm or combat support arm is signals because signals are the people who help us communicate because the area in which we fight the battle there are no telephone lines in all places there is no mobile tower so how do we communicate with each other we communicate with each other Uh, either on a static network or a uh, dynamic network something like mobile but on radio sets you must have seen in all army magazines or comics you have read in childhood or uh, uh, in movies they always carry radio set and they communicate on the radio set and this kind of huge network it is manned by signals people and uh, all the equipment is maintained by them they are the people who decide the network they are the people who maintain the secrecy of the communication which is very important in times of war so there is a something known as signals regime then there is something known as eme electrical and mechanical engineers they are the people who are looking after the maintenance of all equipment of indian army सो अगर गन खराब हो गया तभी भी वो मदद करेंगे रेडियो सेट खराब हो गया तभी भी वो मदद करेंगे गाड़ी खराब हो गई तभी भी वो मदद करेंगे एंड दे हैव गॉट ऑल ट्रेन पर्सनल फॉर दैट रिस्पेक्टिव एंड इनफैक्ट व्हेन यू सी हेलीकॉप्टर्स इंडियन आर्मी आल्सो फ्लाइज हेलीकॉप्टर फॉर कैजुअलिटी इवेक्युएशन एंड डायरेक्टिंग फायर सो दिस ई पीपल ऑल्सो मेंटेन हेलीकॉप्टर्स एंड रिपेयर हेलीकॉप्टर्स सो यू कैन सी द ह्यूज गैमट ऑफ दिस पीपल then there are two more services ac and uh, that is army service corps and army on who are looking after our logistics because army when they go ahead there is no village there is no support so someone has to make ration reach someone has to make ammunition reach someone has to make uh, a spare reach the battlefield uh, someone has to carry the ammunition from uh, backward areas to i mean backward areas means the area in the back uh, which is in ammunition depots to the front line so these two are uh, these two services look after the logistics part of it then there is a very very important uh, uh, service which is called amc that is army medical corps uh, by name suggest uh, in that particular service all doctors are there and all the people who man military uh, hospitals uh, i am very uh, happy to tell you in the initial years of doctor as a young captain or lieutenant or a major doctors are posted on the same post where infantry officers are posted like when i was in glacier in 1991 92 at 17000 feet above mean sea level there was a doctor posted next to me so uh, uh, don't feel that they are all cushy job sitting in military hospitals and looking after patient no they also go to forward areas they also walk the same path what we walk uh, uh, if you have seen uh, old hindi movie or not old haider 
they have shown a cordon and search operation so when we conduct cordon and search operation doctors walk with us they are part of that operation because if there is a injury to a soldier or a civilian they tend to him right then and there very important thing and they plan uh, what is their participation is operation is that when operation goes at depending on the number of troops participating depending on number of days operation is likely to continue the doctors have to plan their evacuation chain their medical stocks and their uh, all other expertise equipment and everything uh, then there is a thing called military intelligence military intelligence are the people who run uh, what you say spy network uh, they interpret the data received from air photographs they interpret the data received from satellites and they tell commanders what we can expect on the other side of hill uh, how enemy is disposed how enemy is deployed on the ground what is the strength and so on and so forth and that's why it is called intelligence then of course there are supporting services like uh there are so many legal issues occur due to the service due to injuries or due to death in service so there is a separate legal branch which is called jag branch judge advocate general branch out there all officers are law <coughs> law qualified uh then you must have seen on 26 january parade uh, that there is a very uh, impressive looking troop on horse uh, saluting president and all the chief guests Uh, so that is 61 cavalry unit of indian army similarly indian army has got n number of animals on its role there are horses there are mules these mules help us uh, tug the luggage on high altitude where there are no roads mules those who uh, are not so well versed with english terminology hindi mein jisko hum khachar bolte hain marathi mein khechra manto apan tena te astat they can carry huge load so they are there then in insurgency area we have got uh, sniffer dogs uh, those who can sniff explosives or those who can sniff uh, uh, the track of the person who has ran into jungle or some darkness so these tracker dogs we have and uh, so all these animals and then horse riding is one of the uh, part of i mean major part of training in all the academies for officers uh because those of you who have tried sitting on a horse uh don't quote me mahabaleshwar and varsova kyunki there are no horses there there are khechars so khachar size mein chota hota hai the well bred horse is nearly 7 to 8 feet tall and if you sit on that and that horse run at the speed only of 40 km per hour uh you feel frightened so as to develop the physical courage and physical stamina officers are encouraged to learn horse riding Uh, so with so many animals in indian army there is a separate arm to look after the animals and management of animals it is called rvc that is remount and veterinary corps all the officers in that corps are veterinary doctors so in this 10 minutes i have given you such a vast thing and mind you that comprises of 12 lakhs of indian army so when you hear in newspaper or some a uh, reporter on tv saying ki 2 million strong army so 2 million is 20 lakhs so where are other 8 lakhs so he what he means by 2 million strong army is not army it is 2 million strong armed forces that includes navy that includes air force so now these many branches i have told you about army what about air force and navy so let's talk about air force uh just by type of air aircrafts like there are fighter aircrafts who actually go for a killing or bombing or uh, i mean air to air domination air space domination they are the fighter pilots they are cream of the air force and uh, when you say air force jo aapke aankhon ke samne jo aata hai that is that fighter pilot and wo hawai jahaz jo speed se bahut speed se jata hai couple of the aircrafts can fly at supersonic speed supersonic means faster than the speed of the sound which is approximately 1200 kilometers per hour uh but that is one part second part is helicopters helicopters may be casualty evacuation wale alag hai attack helicopters jo ladai mein hissa lete hain jo aapne american movies mein kafi dekhe honge uh, so wo indian army ke aur indian air force ke paas bhi hai wo helicopter pilot alag hote hain then there are huge passenger liners 
जैसे नॉर्मल इंडियन एयरलाइंस या जेट एयरवेज का हवाई जहाज होता है जिसमें हमारे जैसे सिविलियन बैठ के बॉम्बे से दिल्ली जाते हैं कहीं भी जाते हैं सो दे आर कॉल्ड पैसेंजर लाइनर्स वी हैव गॉट पैसेंजर लाइनर्स इन एयरफोर्स दे आर यूज फॉर लार्ज साइज ट्रुप मूवमेंट फ्रॉम वन एंड टू अदर अदर एंड फॉर एग्जाम्पल जब बंबई में 2008 में हमला हुआ था होटल ताज और ट्राइडेंट और वो कसाब का पूरा हमला तब जो एनएसजी के लोग दिल्ली से बॉम्बे आए थे एक दिन में या एक दिन में मतलब शॉर्ट नोटिस के ऊपर तो वो ऐसे बड़े हवाई जहाज में बैठ के आ गए एंड दैट टाइम वी वर नॉट रिलाइंग ऑन द प्राइवेट ऑपरेटर्स लाइक जेट एयरलाइंस और स्पाइस जेट और समथिंग लाइक दैट एयरफोर्स रन दो एयरक्राफ्ट सो नाउ इफ यू कम टू थिंक ऑफ इट द फाइटर पायलट एंड द जेट एयरलाइन देखने के लिए नीचे से देखने के लिए दोनों हवाई जहाज है लेकिन चलाने के लिए दोनों में उतना ही फर्क है जितना कार चलाने में है और ट्रक या जेसी भी चलाने में सो दैट इज अ फ्लाइंग ब्रांच ऑफ एयरफोर्स देन देर आर पीपल हु आर लुकिंग आफ्टर द मेंटेनेंस ऑफ दिस एयरफोर्स रिपेयरिंग एंड मेंटेनेंस ऑफ द एयरक्राफ्ट इट्स अज मशीन सो इट रिक्वायर्स सॉलिड मेंटेनेंस थर्ड पीपल दो मुंबई यू मस्ट हैव सीन अज टॉवर नेक्स्ट टू Santa Cruz Airport. When you are traveling on a Western Express highway, when you climb that Parley Bridge next to Centaur Hotel, you must have seen a huge tower. That is called AC, ATC, Air Traffic Controller. Now, what they do? They do. So they are the people on whose computer screen all the aircrafts in that given airspace are flashing, and they coordinate their movements so that no accident takes place. it's a very 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 high pressure job so they are respected next to the fighter pilots that is that high pressure job then there are people who are looking after the salaries and payments of the people the huge logistics so there are accounts and logistics team then with the change in technology over last 20 25 years army navy air force in every arm and service there is a large number of people looking after communication and cyber security just imagine if the communication in atc is collapsed or is made to shut can you imagine the number of accidents taking place in airspace if atc doesn't function the airport doesn't function it stops so there are people who are always on the watch on the connectivity and cyber security and the security associated with that connectivity similarly you come to navy uh, rather than explaining navy uh, our naval counterparts always used to say sir there are three types of navy fly navy sail navy and dive navy so fly navy is that there are naval aviators they have also got couple of fighter aircrafts and uh, small passenger liners for recce and helicopters for casi wag you must have seen uh, Uh, virat or ships like vikrant where there are ships on the, i mean there are aircrafts on the ship so they are the people who are flying in the air though, though they are part of navy but they are flying in the air from the ship then there are sail navy uh, which are actually sailing on the water and fighting the war in the international waters or next to indian uh, 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 nautical limit uh, in the ship also there are many parts there are navigators who are actually kyunki समुद्र में कुछ है नहीं ना कि भाई अगले बनिए से राइट टर्न ले लेना या बड़ा कॉलेज दिखाई देगा वहां से लेफ्ट टर्न ले लेना सो इन ओपन सी हाउ डू देविगेट सो इट्स अ वेरी एक्सपर्ट निश फील्ड कॉल्ड नेविगेशन इन नेवी एंड इवेंचुअली दिस वर्ड हैज कम फ्रॉम ओल्ड संस्कृत और इंडियन वर्ड नावगति एंड वहां से वो नेविगेशन वर्ड आया हुआ है वहीं से वो नेवी आया हुआ है सो दैट इज नेविगेशन then there are n number of radars on ship basically to uh, uh, track the enemy aircrafts approaching track the enemy ships approaching or uh, all other communication so radar is a separate field in navy and then there are huge n number of gun uh, 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 weapons on the missiles weapon systems on the ship so armament and weapon system is a different this thing and of course a ship is so huge it's like a small village Uh, fitted into 300 meter by say 20 meters or something like that so there are electrical engineers there are mechanical engineers there are cooks uh, those who serve in navy they get fed up of eating ice cream there is so much of ice cream on ship so uh, so that is navy so by describing all these divisions 
every division require manpower every division require young fight worthy manpower and they are recruited three through two channels one is through soldiers one is through officers so soldiers as i said if you want to join navy and air force you have to be well standard science pass so sorry commerce guys uh, not much of scope there but not that you cannot join you can join but vacancies are limited to logistic side account side or if you are some computer qualified cyber security qualified you can get into that but actual technical side where there is a lot of machine maintenance and operation is uh, expected out there scope for commerce student is bit limited army when you join a fighting force there is no restriction on commerce arts science if you are fit individual you are willing individual welcome to indian army uh i require jawans very young that's why that age limit is like this uh let's talk about officers how can i join as an officer so the earliest you can join any of these services is after your 12th you have to be 12th pass and uh, don't take this word as a wrong word it is not 12th pass you have to have more than 60% marks in 12th and then you can appear for nda entrance exam national defense academy which is there in khadakwasla next to pune uh i'm not trying to uh, discourage you or something like that but just to make you realize the enormity of the whole process nda has got just 300 plus vacancies that is 320 odd vacancies and the number of people who are filling the form for nda entrance every year is 1.5 to 2.5 lakhs so you can just divide 320 divided by 2 lakhs and you know the probability of success but shouldn't i try because of that no we must try because 320 mein se koi na koi to 320 select hone hi hai na main padhai karunga and i'll be one of the 320 it is as simple as that nda trains you for 3 years and then last one year the cadet india the person who joins nda is called cadet after 3 years training he is sent to if he is a naval cadet he is sent to indian naval academy in kerala if he is a air force cadet he is sent to indian air force academy in hyderabad or if he is an army cadet he is sent to indian military academy in dehradun and after 4 years training they are commissioned into indian army in various arms and services now which arm and service so that depends on your passing out merit and your choice at the time of passing out nearly 3 months before that they ask us where do you want to join i opted for infantry i got infantry but couple of them opted for something else and they did not get that so wo hota hai that depends on your choice and your merit same way in air force everyone wants to be fighter pilot but not everyone becomes fighter pilot but anyway that is much later i am not trying to talk about that so this is first level of entry that is after 12th standard then the second level of entry let's say you miss that uh, chance because for nda entrance your age has to be between 16 to 18 and a half uh, why because if you add 4 years to that so if you are 17 years old when you join because generally we are 17 years old when we pass 12th so if you join india at that time you add 4 years by the time you are 21 or 22 you are commissioned officer so you are hell hearty young guy ready to get into battle so that is the calculation if you miss that chance yes there is another chance wait for your graduation complete your graduation and appear for combined defense services exam again uh i believe majority of the students who are on the call here they are from commerce background scope for commerce is limited as i earlier said because if you want to be fighter pilot you have to be from the science side or you have to be engineer if you want to join navy <coughs> 95% of the naval people are science side people 5% are of course logistics and all these things they are from commerce side or arts side anything army is more welcoming you can join after even ba or bcom in fighting arm uh, but when you get into academy your chances of getting into engineers or eme are restricted but you can get into any fighting arm in indian army with commerce degree or 
uh, arts degree. Uh, all this information is all those on those website. You can those who who are finding it a bit difficult to uh, assimilate in such a fast speech. You can always go back to that and ask me questions subsequently. Sir, ये समझ में नहीं आया या ये क्या लिखा हुआ है? NDA exam, National Defence Academy entrance exam, and Combined Defence Services exam. Both these exams are conducted by UPSC. That is Union Public Service Commission. Uh, there is an elaborate procedure for that. Uh, uh, if i try to explain that procedure that procedure itself will take another one hour so i'm not getting into that if you reach that level just contact me if you are willing to appear for the exam if you are in your last year graduation uh, contact me separately after going through that website i'll clarify all your doubts also uh, there are people like jaise maine jack branch ka ullekh kiya tha judge advocate general branch so obviously jack branch officer has to be minimum llb so today if you have to clear llb um uh, you have to pass i mean uh, after 12th if you take integrated course it is 5 years or you do after graduation it is 5 years so obviously your age will be that much more but then for jack branch recruitment uh, uh, that age limit will be appropriately increased and it is there on the uh, 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 there is no the website like for jack branch uh, you are recruited till the age of 27 same way with doctors same way with these veterinary uh, science uh, graduates and so on and so forth uh, now come back to uh, is there any scope for 12 standard science pass i want to become engineer but i want to join navy army or air force yes there is a scope if you have scored collectively 70% marks in science 12 and pass their selection process you join their engineering college so all the expenditure is paid for by the government and you become officer at the end of the engineering degree so this is very very broadly i am saying so because i am looking at the watch also it is 19 i mean 720 uh, so from the specified time start of the 630 to uh, the 45 minutes is over uh, so i'll take a break here <clears throat> and i hope uh, i have made some sense uh, but at the same time i am very aware that you must be having multiple questions in your mind so now what i would request uh, dr anekar is आनेकर की आनेकर कसा उल्लेख करता मैडम तुम्हें आनेकर आनेकर हाँ तो डॉक्टर आनेकर ना मी विनंदी कर दें कि I would like students to ask me questions and I will answer that query uh, and if she can or डॉक्टर मटकर can uh, uh, moderate that uh sir we can do one thing uh, we, please if you share your email id we yes. can send you all their questions and you can reply at okay. your leisure at your leisure time you can reply sir because okay. uh, or, they are uh, on the are youtube you request... oh acha acha yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, they are so, on the youtube uh, live streaming is going on so uh, uh, we okay. can send mail you their okay. questions and queries in If it no problem. Should, yeah, I, I share your to, email. Uh, <laughs> yeah, my email ID is s s raiker s s r a i k e r one zero zero nine one zero zero nine nine at gmail dot com. Okay, sir. Uh, I have um, do. in this mail i have sent it through uh, chat and you can read those who are on the call uh, they can read this so uh, then i would request ma'am you and other people who are present on this uh, call uh, to ask me a question because uh, it's a huge field and if there is a specific question that query will query uh, or reply will have more weightage uh, than it is a singular blab blabbering or monologue from my side Yes, Matkar sir. Ah, uh, yes, ma'am. We may ask some questions, or if students have in the chat box, if they have posted some questions. Okay. You may just check and. Uh, yeah. There may be a, a comments uh, streaming in in YouTube also, which I'm not seeing, of course, but uh, you can read that aloud.
I don't see any. Hello, yes. students. This is special request for you. Please, you can load your questions on chat box. question from my side that what is yes, the yes. yeah what is the routine of soldiers generally uh, what uh, training and all they have, they are going through or... yeah. yeah and what is the um, retirement so... age and what are the perquisites oh. incentives oh. they get in the yeah. various uh, yeah so i'll answer about retirement first um a jawan can serve till 32 years of his service depending on how he gets promoted the highest rank a jawan can get is subedar major and honorary rank thereafter so uh, jawan who has reached that level he'll retire somewhere between 28th or 32nd year of his service so if you add that from let's say he joins in the age of 17 you add another 28 uh, so that kind of age he'll have at the time of retirement but many jawans uh, opt to retire at the service of 15th year because jawans service becomes pensionable uh, within first 15 years of service but by if he completes 15 years of service uh, army navy air force uh, obviously he is not going to reach the highest rank of subedar major of uh, equivalent in army and navy but he will get pension of whatever rank he is retiring in the 15th year may he may be a havaldar or he may be a nayak or in navy uh, uh, chief petty officer or someone like that. for officers also you can serve till the age of 54 to 59 60 depending on again how many promotions you get but for officers pensionable service is 20 years so if you want to have a pension from central government you have to have serve for minimum 20 years for officers and 15 years for jawans that is as far as retirement age is concerned coming down to a uh, routine uh, there is a lot of emphasis on physical fitness so there is a pt in the morning every day morning that is religion and so when we use the word uh, religiously we do something uh, what does that mean is that the way the seriousness with which you follow your religion the same seriousness uh, with the same seriousness you do a particular activity so pt is religion wherever you are you do pt Uh, of course, if you are in a J and K on a glacier or on the uh, LOC, uh, there is no scope for PT because staying there itself is a PT. Uh, PT is physical training. Uh, thereafter, people go out. I am talking about uh, peace location places like say Pune, Jamnagar, Hyderabad, Udhampur, Lucknow. So we uh, one hour PT in the morning. Uh, go to your mess. Go to your home. Have breakfast. Change into uniform. Come back to office. Office runs from 8:30 to 2:30. Uh, 1:30, go back home, have lunch, come back in the evening. Those who have got work in the office, they work in the office. Those who don't have work in the office, they go to playground because again, that is a religion. In the evening, there are a lot of socializations for jawan as well as uh, officers. You must have seen more glorious things in uh, Hindi movies or English movies about parties. Uh, after some time, they don't remember that glorious. It becomes very boring. But all the same, there is socialization. those who are in field areas like manipur nagaland jnk for them there is no time table there is no fixed drills one night they'll be told to go for a ambush one night they'll be told to uh, go for cordon and search they'll be told to go somewhere else similarly for navy and air force uh, if you are operationally uh, uh, deployed uh, like those of you who have been to jamnagar or jodhpur uh, you must have heard fighter aircraft taking off and landing at all odd hours even raat ko 11 baje ya subah 4 baje so there is no time table and uh, that really takes toll on you and that is where one needs to be very very physically fit uh, so if you ask me is there any standard time table or standard routine for a soldier there is no each location each unit considering its location considering its nature of job considering uh, uh, the seniority of the person Uh, he has been given task or he has been given duty perks and perquisites uh uh of course there is a lot of data on that 
there is a group insurance if someone dies his family is compensated very well uh, there is a free medical service in all uh, military hospitals and uh, wherever he is in the service uh, not only for him but for his wife for his two children for his parents if they are not drawing any central government pension uh, after retirement uh, you get pension army is the only service which has been spared no pension after 2005 in all armed forces you get pension uh jawans get uh, dresses equipment everything free but officers have to pay themselves for that uh, but they will not crib because they are getting paid more than soldiers uh, uh, uh twice a year you get free warrant to come home so basically free ticket to come home and uh, two three other times if you want to come home on casual leave you get a concessional ticket a uh, railway aircraft everywhere um but but those young people who are listening to this lecture and all the seniors like you i would just tell you one thing uh, armed forces is not a career armed forces is way of life because if i just look at the emoluments since you all are from commerce background you know in any business in any uh, enterprises more the risk more the returns am i right but who faces more risk than armed forces people because what is at risk is my life and is there any value attached to my life and if that be so then i should be the highest paid employee in any of the organizations in india which is not the case and hence i will never pay attention to emoluments because even in my times in 1985 when i joined army i did not know basic pay of second lieutenant and in fact first four months i was on a remote post in arunachal pradesh so first time i got my pay slip from pune because cd is in pune i had already put in four months of service but i never bothered because uh, there was no mall in arunachal pradesh there was no atm in arunachal pradesh there was no bank so even if someone had given me a bag full of money i couldn't have spent it spent a single pike on that post so we were never bothered about money and let me tell you and assure you even in 2021 today there are young people not one two but thousands of young people in india who are not bothered about pay package and they join armed forces for the nasha of it mujhe fauj pe jana hai isliye log fauj mein jaate hai tankha ke liye koi bhi fauj mein nahi jata aur jana bhi nahi chahiye kyunki tumhare zindagi ka insurance 50000 ya 1 lakh rupaya nahi ho sakta this is just a, and i am telling you after 30 years uh, i mean i joined in 1986 so it is almost 35 years and today also when i meet young people from college graduation and all this thing when i ask them bhai tumko pata hai udhar kya hota hai and then young guy answers me sir jaan ja sakti hai ladai mein goli mein mere ko pata hai but i want to join army and it's very heartening to know so uh, we always say india has got a bright future we need not to worry about india so that is uh, to briefly answer your question hello <coughs> sir i would like to ask one question uh, what facilities are provided after retirement facilities after retirement is as i told you pension okay and medical services uh then you are been given csd card canteen service uh, stores department uh, in which you can get subsidized goods uh, but many people don't rely on that uh, because many of the time csd outlets are bit away from your home and jitna paisa main us saman ke saving mein bachaunga usse zyada mera taxi ka ya car ka kharcha aata hai so uh, that is that so these are the only three this thing otherwise you are just like any other uh, citizen of india okay <laughs> sir uh, for entry level and commission level uh, students supposed to make a preparation ya yeah, sort of you can that the study particularly from the books ya yeah, any other sources where they can available yes so um, uh, if someone is interested in appearing for any of these exams i would suggest just go to the website and then you'll realize then the scheme of exam okay like national defense academy has got only entrance has got only two papers one paper encompasses chemistry physics maths 
geography, history, civics, general knowledge, everything in one paper. And second paper is only maths, 12th standard maths. Okay. So if you know the scheme of thing, you know what to study. Similarly, when you go for graduation, uh, I'm mm. sorry, selection for after graduation, right. uh, PDS has got uh, different papers. So there is a general knowledge paper, there is an English paper, there is a maths and analytical uh, ability paper. Uh, for Naval and Air Force guys, there is a combination of physics and maths. So okay. uh, see the scheme of the paper, see the syllabus, you'll get it. Now how to study? So uh, you go to any uh, book stall, I mean, jahan college ki kitabe milti hai, and you ask for an India entrance ka guide and they'll give you a guide. But of course, one guide is never a solution because the syllabus, general knowledge syllabus is so vast. I have to be in regular touch with newspapers, TV, and uh, general awareness. Uh, and that is only one stage. Once you pass written test, they call yeah. you for services selection board interview, SSB interview. Okay. And it is not traditional interview. This runs over four to five days. Of course, you have to UPSC. You have to go to UPSC. You UPSC. You have to SSB. And a uh, lot of evaluation is done. Basically, it is a psychological evaluation. Uh, mm -hmm. They check whether you are a good officer material. Now you will say, well, sir, what is officer material? An officer of the armed forces who is going to lead men into battle, he or <coughs> she has to have certain qualities. They are called OLQs, officer-like qualities. Something like good verbal communication, good written communication, physical courage, moral courage, uh, analytical mind. So all these qualities are tested by psychologists in that SSB for four to five days. Once you clear SSB, then there is a medical test, uh, whether your all physical functions are all right. And it's a very detailed medical <coughs> test done there. And when you pass through all these three stages, then you get into the training academy. Isi ka chota version jawanon ke liye hota hai. Wo dasvi ka bachcha hai, to usko dasvi ke level ka ek paper hota hai. Paper pass ho gaya, to uska physical hota hai. Bhagne daudne ke liye bolte hai. Fir medical hota hai. And then he goes for training. So, uh, I cannot explain you uh, syllabus in such a short time. It is like what we do in normal academic colleges. If I ask you to ask me, sir, what do I have to do with BCOM? Then you will say that it's been three years after 12 years. The syllabus is the syllabus, the subjects are the subjects. This is the prescribed books, this is the reference books. And then you start studying, appear for the exam, pass the exam. It's the same process. See the scheme of the examination, see the syllabus, and uh, accordingly. But let me tell you, if you have to crack NDA, the guy has to be very good in maths, and uh, I will say if he has to appear in say March or April of 2020, mm -hmm. he should have started somewhere in June of 2020. Mm -hmm. So if you have to pass in India, you should have to start in the last year. It's very, very competitive. Sure, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank sir, you. Sir. Sir, my request is there. You have uh, served Siachin. So, yes. can you share your experience how it is? Because we only can see, you know, uh, some films, short films or uh, yeah. some yeah. short clips, but how actually okay. it is, it's really. Okay. Uh, <laughs> of course. Only your, you it's have very, a very, first uh, experience. Yeah, yeah, sir. Yes. Yes. Now, uh, just to give you the brief background, uh, uh, Indian Army noticed uh, mischief of Pakistan Army somewhere around 83-84 yes. in CHN Glacier. And pronto, uh, things moved in Delhi and we went and occupied. So that was in 84-86. And uh, my unit went to CHN Glacier in June 1991. Uh, before that, that is June 90 to June 91. Unit was getting trained. Now you will say, Are ye unit kya? Aapka to training ho gaya tha na ek bar. 
तो नो इंडियन आर्मी हैज टू ट्रेन पीपल इन ए कंटिन्यूड मैनर जैसे हम पहले बारहवीं करते हैं फिर बीकॉम करते हैं फिर एम कॉम करते हैं फिर पीएचडी करते हैं फिर और एक प्रोफेशनल कोर्स करते हैं फिर कोई सी करता है सो इट इज अ कंटिन्यूस प्रोफेशन यू हैव टू गेट ट्रेन कंटिन्यूसली एंड देन ग्लेशियर बींग वेरी डिफिकल्ट ट्रेन एवरी इंडक्टिंग यूनिट वेन आई से यूनिट इट इज कमांडेड बाय कर्नल एंड अप्रोक्सिमेटली एट हंड्रेड प्लस मैन सो वी वेर ट्रेन इन बेस कैम्प and then we were inducted into glacier so in those days uh, not many people had cameras mobile or internet to bahut dur tha so uh, i couldn't have so many photographs but today if you just search videos and photos on of chn glacier you will find uh, uh, millions of photographs on uh, this thing uh, otherwise i could have simply showed you photograph on this camera but anyway i have a couple of photographs in my uh, memory and my album but anyway so coming back uh, where i was posted was a part of uh, glacier is divided into five parts now five parts in those days only three parts after 99 uh, uh, kargil battle we expanded our presence we extended our presence in that sector so uh, where i was posted that post was 17000 feet above mean sea level uh now just to give you the correct assessment we have studied in our geography book mount everest which is the highest point on the surface of the earth is 8800 plus meters above mean sea level which roughly translates into 28000 feet above mean sea level so 28000 is mount everest and i was at 17000 feet so someone will say are fir to kuch bhi nahi but nahi in mumbai we are at zero mean sea level we are next to sea level we are say sea level or if i am sitting on 10th floor i may be around uh, 60 feet uh, i mean something like 120 or 130 feet above mean sea level if you go to kolhapur pune uh, we are around 700 to 800 feet above mean sea level and if you see bombay or kolhapur ya pune ke thand mein kitna farak hai 800 square feet 800 feet me so you just extrapolate that to 17000 feet above mean sea level so so that is that i mean in summer uh, day time when sun is shining the temperature used to be like uh, very chilled ac around 12 13 degree aur raat ko fir bhi wo 5 6 degree temperature aa jayega 4 degree aa jayega pani jam jata tha all the nights on that post बकेट में रखा हुआ पानी जम जाएगा एंड पानी जमना मीन्स टेम्परेचर गोइंग बिलो फोर डिग्री इन विंटर टेम्परेचर यूज टू गो इन नाइट माइनस थर्टी टू माइनस थर्टी टू डिग्रीज डे टाइम माइनस टेन डिग्रीज नाउ समन विल आस मी सर फिर सर्वाइव कैसे करते हैं सो डोंट वरी इंडियन आर्मी प्रोवाइड्स यू विद वेरी गुड इक्विपमेंट वेरी गुड हैबिटेट द डिफिकल्ट पार्ट इज दैट कोपिंग अप विद दैट आइसोलेशन क्योंकि वो पूरे माहौल में आपके जो कंपनी के 50, 60, 70 लोग हैं या प्लेटून के 35 लोग हैं आप उनके साथ ही तीन महीने निकालते हो विथ नो कनेक्शन टू आउटसाइड वर्ल्ड टुडे द इम्प्रूव देर इज अ लॉट ऑफ इम्प्रूवमेंट विद द मोबाइल एंड बेटर कनेक्टिविटी आई कैन टॉक होम सिटिंग ऑन ग्लेशियर बट दैट वॉज नॉट अ केस इन नाइनटीन एंड देन नथिंग ग्रोज देर सो आई कुड नेवर गेट टू ईट फ्रेश वेजिटेबल फ्रेश वेजिटेबल्स कम यूज टू कम टू अस थ्रू हेलीकॉप्टर वो हेलीकॉप्टर भी आएगा तभी अगर मौसम खुला है तो मौसम खराब है तो हेलीकॉप्टर नहीं आएगा सो वी यूज टू गेट फ्रेश वेजिटेबल्स वंस इन सेवन डेज एंड वेरी फनी पार्ट मीट एंड चिकन दोज आर नॉन वेजिटेरियंस दे कैन ईट एज मच एज दे वांट इट यूज टू कम इन 80 किलोग्राम का बोरी बट बाय द टाइम हेलीकॉप्टर यूज टू ड्रॉप ऑन द पोस्ट दैट मटन यूज टू सो हार्ड टू कट दैट मटन आर सोल्जर्स यूज टू यूज एक्स और कैची से या इसे छुरी से नहीं कटेगा तेल कुराड़ पाजे कारण तो बर्फ जाए खूब टनक है तुम्हें बगित तुम्हें जर फ्रीज मे एखा बटाटा काड़ून कापाइस प्रयत्न के कसा हो तो सो जस्ट इमेजिन मटन जर आम महीनाभर बर्फाटल तो तोड़ा आम कि कष्ट होते दैट इज वन आिथे ऑक्सीजन खूब कमी तुम्हारी कूकर की शिट्टी कि अन्न शिजत नहीं आम जर सका मटन खाए आमचा रात्रपाळीचा सा शिपाई जो सेंट्रिटीवर उभा असतो तो दोन किंवा तीन ला ते मटन कोराडीने तोडणार 
हे कुकरमध्ये टाकणार ते स्टोअर ठेवणार आणि त्याच्या एक होऊन दे तीस होऊन दे पस्तीस होऊन दे चाळीस शिट्या होऊन दे त्याच्यानंतर ते मटण शिजायचं तेव्हा पण सकाळ झालेली असायची आणि मग सकाळी आरामात लोक मटण खायचे मग त्याच्यात काय वगैरे ते घाला सगळं त्याच्यानंतर थंडीमध्ये आपलं शरीर खूप उष्णता खर्च करतं खूप कॅलरीज खर्च करतं त्यामुळे हाय कॅलरी फूड तिकडे दिलं जातं म्हणजे मी एक फोटो काढला माझ्याकडे तो अजूनही कुठेतरी असेल दोनशे किंवा अडीचशे ग्रामचा एक चॉकलेटचा बार येतो अमूलचा किंवा सगळ्या चॉकलेट कंपन्यांचा येतो आणि त्याचे असे मोठे ब्राऊन खोके की बारा डझन म्हणजे एकशे चव्वेचाळीस पीसेस दोनशे ग्राम किंवा अडीचशे ग्राम चॉकलेटचे असे खोके हेलिकॉप्टरने यायचे आणि ते सगळ्यांनी खायचे असायचे पण तिथे तुमच्या पचन संस्थेवर पण परिणाम होतो कारण तुमचं सगळं मेटाबोलिझम खाली जातं त्यामुळे तिकडे एवढी चॉकलेट असतात पण कुणाला खायची इच्छा होत नाही कारण एकदा जर मी भरपूर चॉकलेट खाल्लं एक पन्नास ग्राम चॉकलेट तर ते पचवायला माझ्या बॉडीला खूप वेळ लागतो पण ॲट द सेम टाइम मला माझ्या बॉडीमधल्या कॅलरीज टिकवून ठेवावे लागतात सो हे जे गणित आहे बॅलन्स त्याच्यात खूप त्रास होतो आणि त्याच्यासाठी वरती जाणारे सगळे लोक फिजिकली अतिशय फिट लागतात आणि हे तर सगळं निसर्गाशी लढाई आहे पण खरा शत्रुता समोर उभा आहे पाकिस्तान तर ते हवे तेव्हा तोफांचा भडीमार करतात मग आम्हीही करतो रायफलच्या गोळ्या अंदाधुंद येतात आम्हीही करतो तर तो म्हणजे चोर पोलिसचा शिपाई असतो खेळ असतो की कधी तिकडे कधी इकडे पण पाकिस्तानचा शत्रू भारत भारताचा शत्रू पाकिस्तान आणि आमच्या दोघांचा कॉमन शत्रू हा निसर्ग ते निसर्गाचं एवढं भव्य रूप आहे किंवा मी भव्य नाही म्हणणार ते निसर्गाचं अतिशय भीषण रूप आहे त्यामुळे दोस पीपल हु गो फॉर ट्रेकिंग इन सह्याद्री और लोअर हिमालय दोज यू आर ट्रेक टप टू कारण ट्रेकर्स भरपूर नऊ ते दहा हजार फीट अबो मीन सी लेवल पर्यंत सहज जातात दे विल रिअलाइज द ग्रॅव्हिटी ऑफ व्हॉट आय एम सेईंग इट्स द नेचर इज मोर आय मीन मोर डेंजरस एनिमी दॅन पाकिस्तान अँड मेजॉरिटी ऑफ आर एनर्जी अँड एफर्ट इज स्पेंड इन फायटिंग नेचर दॅन पाकिस्तान क्योंकि इफ यू आस्क एनी इंडियन आर्मी सोल्जर ऑर अन ऑफिसर भाई पाकिस्तान का क्या तो बोलेगा साहब उनसे तो हम डरते नाही उनको तो हम कभी भी निपट लेंगे बट नेचर वी कॅनॉट से लाईक दॅट देन देर आर ॲव्हलॅन्चेस देर आर क्रेवासेस अँड ऑल दिस थिंग्स सो लेट मी टेल यू देर आर सो मेनी मीटिंग्स अँड ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम्स अँड लिडरशिप अँड डेव्हलपमेंट ऑफ लिडरशिप्स अँड ऑल दिस थिंग्स अँड देर आर सो मेनी क्वालिफाईड पीपल हुम बट लेट मी टेल यू the 10th standard pass soldiers of mine who were with me in glacier uh, they were few of the finest people i have served in my 35 years and they didn't go to any mba college or they did not attend any hotshot universities uh, but they were fine people and uh, i'm thankful to god and i'm thankful to them uh, that today from a seat of experience and authority i'm delivering this lecture Anything else, please, ma'am? Hello. Ma'am, would like to yes. ask any questions? I think... Hello. Her, her uh, picture is frozen. I think, I think there is some is... problem with connectivity. Yeah, connectivity is an issue, sir. There is no any questions from the students. I think students are going to put it on your case, like mail only. Hello, principal yes, ma'am. Yes, Dr. Mandel. I am getting you clearly. Yeah, principal ma'am would like to ask any questions. I think ma'am uh, can't hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sir, there is no any questions from the chat box. Okay. no one has okay. asked any questions no problem i have shared my email id uh, you can share the same to them and uh, if i receive any mail i'll obviously answer uh, right right it takes some time but i'll answer sure sure hello madam <clears throat> i think there is no connectivity 
I think I'll call her on mobile that way. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So please wait. Uh, I think within few seconds it should start. Yes. Hello, yes, sir. आवाज आवाज हेलो मैडम कैंसर नेटवर्क से कहीं तेरी इश्यू है कारण आपका सिर्फ फोन वोर बोल रहे हैं जैसे शिप डू यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चंस फ्रॉम द स्टूडेंट्स आता ये तो है आवाज तुमसे हाँ मैडम ये तो है आवाज हेलो मैडम हेलो हाँ मैम हेलो आई थिंक देर इज नो कनेक्टिविटी सर Hello, ma'am. We are at the fag end of the uh, uh, time allotted. So, if you are not getting through to Dr. Anikar, I think yeah, there is no connection. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sir, there is no anything to be uh, uh, say. We we will wind up. Yes, no problem, doctor. Ah, no, what no, happens? No problem, because, doctor. Ah, what were the questions? Comes you can see through the either mail. Yeah, if you got it, we will definitely uh, forward to you. I'll just no, you can no, ask, ma'am, no, no. whether we would like to conclude. Yeah, would like to say anything. Ma'am, ma'am is I think you can see no connected connectivity. Yeah, connection is a problem. No problem. Okay. Okay. Anyway, sir, uh, I'll just can give a word of thanks, sir. Thank you so much for your informative and career-oriented session. <clears throat> sir, your session was so attractive, professional and uh, disciplined one, and we got through things that the armed forces of India, then career opportunities, how to join. what are the entry level what is the commission level then functions of all army navy as well as can air force you have also mentioned different divisions in armed forces and also we got a very good experience of your own in a siachen glacier that is a really we can see the wonderful and a very very we can effect to one so this we can once again thank you so much on behalf of our management our principal ma'am and our college thank you so much sir my pleasure my pleasure dr matkar yes sir yes sir thank yes. you so much sir shall i leave the call yeah yeah yes sir ma'am yes sir okay thank you good night thank good night gentlemen ladies and yeah night. good night to all of you students are requested to fill the feedback form and certificate will give it to you within a 7 days time so all of all are requested to uh, submit the feedback feedback is a very important it is connected to you can see that the internet and once you submit the feedback then you will get you can see that the certificate so all are requested to submit your feedback form thank you so much